Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we'll be taking a look at how to prepare your mix, how to get things ready so that you can efficiently mix down your tracks to create your final song. Now this will work inside of any DAW that you might be using. Today we'll be featuring Pro Tools, but the DAW really doesn't matter. The techniques are the same no matter what you're using. Our session we'll be working with today is a live recording of a band. We've got drums, bass, two guitars, and keyboards. So let's go ahead and set this up to get started with our mixing. The first thing we'll want to do is figure out what's on each track. So here's our overall sound. Now we'll solo the tracks, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out what's on each track, and then I'll label the tracks accordingly. So there's our kick. Next up, snare. Next. Those look like stereo overheads. So we'll call that OH left and OH right. Our next track sounds like bass. Next up is one of our guitar. One. Guitar two. Finally, it must be our keyboards. Yep. Okay, so now we know what's on each track. What I like to do at this point is first of all make sure that all my pans are centered. And the easy way to verify that is to option click on each one of those controls. You can see that we're centered here. The next thing I like to do is pull all the tracks down to zero and basically give myself just a ground zero to start from. So we'll go ahead and bring all those down. Now I like to color code my tracks so I can easily jump to exactly the things that I want to work on. Now I have a system that I've put together that works for me of various colors. You can choose whatever colors you like. Um, in my case, I like to start with the drums being green. So we'll go ahead and Pro Tools and click down here. And we'll select a uh, green color. Then I like to color the bass blue. We'll choose this blue here. Our guitars, we will make orange. Now, if I had different guitars in this track, for example, acoustic guitars, rhythm guitars, lead guitars, all on separate tracks, I'd make those slightly different shades of orange. Finally, we have our keyboards, and we'll make those a shade of yellow. If I had vocals, I would make those red. Other instruments, I might make purple. And I'd use yet another color for my effects, for my submasters, and so on, so that you can easily see what's going on. Now, within Pro Tools, you can choose to either just have the colors displayed at the top and the bottom of the tracks, or as I have it here, where the entire track changes color. And you set that up in the preferences for Pro Tools. Now, to control my overall output, I need to have a master fader set up. I've already got one set up here, so it's controlling the level that's feeding our cameras. So we'll go ahead and unhide that and bring that out. So here's our master fader. Everything is set up to, uh, to feed through those. But the other thing I like to do is group my like instruments through submaster so that I can apply effects to the overall sound of all those instruments together, as well as easily turn them up and down all in one batch. So I like to, for example, add a submaster for the drums. We'll create a stereo aux input for that. We'll hold shift command, hit N, then we'll hold the command key, use our right arrow to create a stereo, and our down arrow till we get to aux input. Create that, and we'll label that drums. Now we need to assign our drums to feed that, so we'll select our four drum tracks. We'll hold Option Shift, route our drums to bus one and two, and route the input of our drums to bus one and two. Now our four individual drum tracks will be fed through this submaster, and that will be sent out to our master. Now in addition to setting the input, I also need to set the output. In this case, I need to feed A1 and 2 as my outputs. Now our four individual drum tracks are summed together into this stereo aux bus, and they'll be sent on then to the master. We don't need a subgroup for the bass, it's just a single track, but let's go ahead and create one for our guitars. So again, we'll hold down Shift Command, hit the N key, hold the Command key, down arrow, and our right arrow. We'll call that guitars. And again, we'll need to route those two guitar tracks. We'll hold our shift and option and select bus three and four. And we'll also select bus three and four as our input here. And we'll select A1 and two as our output. 
Now our two guitar tracks will feed through this submaster and be sent out to our master. We only have one keyboard track, so we don't need a submaster bus for that either. To make things easier to deal with as far as the busing is concerned, you might want to rename those buses. So we can just right click on the bus, we'll rename, and we'll call that drums. You can see that all those were changed. Here, we don't need to rename that. We'll rename our guitars to guitars. So now we've got an organized busing scheme here. One other thing that I like to do, particularly with drums where you have a number of different tracks, is assign those to be controlled by a VCA. So let's go ahead and add a VCA track. We'll hold Shift, Command, and N. And again, we'll hold our Command key and down to VCA Master. We'll create that. And I'm going to slide that all the way to the left. Now we want to assign our four tracks. To do that, click on the four tracks. We'll hit Command G to create a group. We'll call those drums. And we want to be sure to assign that to our VCA, which is here. And we also want Follow Global selected. And that allows us to select the solo and the mute buttons for all four tracks simultaneously. We'll click OK. You can see that this turned to indicate drums here. To show you how this VCA works, let's turn up these four tracks. Now as we move that VCA master, it's going to simultaneously move all four of these. Now the nice thing about this versus using a regular group in Pro Tools is that we can still adjust the individual track levels without having to defeat the group. Now a lot of times when you're working on a mix, you're going to want to have a reverb or something that applies to all your tracks. Typically you'll apply a reverb so that it sounds like everything is coming from the same room, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and add an aux for that. The other thing I'm going to add in this case is I'm going to add another bus by the drums that I can use for squashing those drums for a parallel compression effect. I may use that, I may not, but having it set up saves me time later in the process. So let's go ahead and add two more stereo aux inputs, assign one to be our effect and one to be our drum squash channel. So we'll hold our shift and our command key, hit N, hold down our command, we'll create Stereo aux, and we're actually going to add two of those. All right. So one of them we're going to slide over here by our drums, and we're going to label that squash. The next one we're going to label reverb. And now I'm going to go ahead and move that reverb back over here by the master fader. Okay, now I'm going to also set that up to where it's being fed by that drums bus. So the same thing is going to feed through that as is feeding through our regular uh, drum sub master here. I'm going to go ahead and assign that to my outputs. The reverb will also be assigned to my outputs. And I'm going to assign the input on that to another bus. We'll set it to 5 and 6. And that way when I assign a send to that, we'll send there. Let's go ahead and label that reverb. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that send off because we're not using it at this point. When I need to use it, it'll be available to me. There it is. Now in many cases where I have a larger session where you can't see everything on one screen, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab those submasters that applied all the tracks and drag them over close to the master. So I would grab the uh, guitars, the drums, I might have a submaster for keyboards, for background vocals. So I'll group all of those together next to the master so when things are scrolled off the screen I can quickly get there and grab all my drums for example or all my guitars and make quick overall mix adjustments. And I put the effects next to those. Now let's go ahead and change the color on our submasters here. Let's make that uh, this same color, and our squash subgroup is that same color as well. One final thing I'll do on a live recording like this is I'll generally put a high pass filter on all the tracks. A lot of times you'll get a cleaner sound in your mix and you'll restore some headroom if you can take that rumble out of the bottom end, particularly where you have a lot of instruments playing at once, the bass will bleed into everything, the bottom of the kick drum will bleed into everything. Taking that out will give you a lot more headroom in your mix and make things sound much cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a high pass filter that applies to all my tracks. Now I'm not going to set that filter at this point, we'll go back and adjust that once we've started our mixing process. To do that, we'll simply go up here to our top insert, and I'm going to add a one band EQ, and we'll set that up so that it is a high pass filter. We'll set that to be very steep, and I'm going to set the frequency at this point all the way down, and again, we'll adjust that during our mixing process. So once I've got that done, I can option click on that, and drag that to additional tracks to put it on all of my audio tracks.
Now, even when I'm working with hardware effects or I've got a hardware EQ, I tend to do this high-pass filtering inside of Pro Tools because I like the way that digital filter is fairly colorless. I don't want to be adding color with that. All I want to do is remove that, that low-frequency rumble that I don't want in the signal. I don't want to be affecting the signal that I desire to have there at all. So I do that in the digital domain, and then if I am going to use my hardware EQs, I'll use those just for tone shaping later. So there you have it. This is how I would set this mix up to get things started. At this point, I start the playback and I begin mixing my tracks. Maybe I build from the drums first, add in the bass, the guitars, to create a rough mix. And then I could start fine-tuning using EQs, panning my signals wherever I want them to be, those types of things. I think you'll find that if you take the time to go through this process when you're beginning each mix, get back to ground zero, organize everything, do all your housekeeping work, set up those things you're going to need later in the process, it'll save you a lot of time and it'll let you be more creative when you're doing the actual mixing. If you have questions on this process or would like more information on the products that are featured in this video, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher.